All right, in this video, we're going to go over polynomial functions and their graphs. All right. So to start out with, let's start with the definition of a polynomial. Right, the definition of, of a polynomial is f of x equals a sub n x to the n plus a to the n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus yada 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 plus a sub 2 x squared plus a sub 1 x to the first plus a sub 0. Okay. Long drawn out thing. Now, all of these exponents, okay, will have to be integers. Teachers, please find this interruption, but seniors I through Z should report to the media center. Seniors I through Z, please report to the media center. And more specifically, sorry about that, and more specifically, whole numbers. Because whole numbers, if you remember, they start at zero and go to positive infinity. Okay? So you can't have negatives, you can, and you can't have fractions. No negatives, and no fractions. All right, so for it to be a polynomial, you have to have no negatives, no fractions, all whole numbers for your exponents. Okay, now, this a sub n term, okay, a sub n, which is your coefficient on your, exp on your variable with the highest exponent. That is called your leading coefficient. All right, that's called your leading coefficient. Now, n, which is your highest exponent, that is called your degree of the polynomial. Okay, that's the degree of the polynomial. So look through, find your highest exponent. That's your degree. Go down and find the, the coefficient. Um, on the variable with that highest exponent, that's your leading coefficient. Now, your leading coefficient can be positive or negative. The only thing that can't be negative are your exponents. Okay? So, a couple of examples here of polynomials. We have f of x equals negative 3x to the fifth plus the square root of 2x squared plus 5. If you see here, exponent, uh, it's a whole number. Exponent, it's a whole number. Square root of 2, I mean, it doesn't matter that that's a square root and that 2 would have a fractional exponent. Since this is not the exponent of the variable, it doesn't matter. Okay, Only the exponents of the variables have to be um, whole numbers. All right. Now, another example of a polynomial that is not written in standard form would be something like negative 3x to the 4th x minus 2, x plus 3. All right, so these are polynomials. Now, these are not polynomials. f of x equals negative 3 square root of x plus the square root of x, oops, 2 square root of x plus 5. Because again, this here, this would give us x to the one half. Okay, because this is your exponent here, the one, but then the two here is the root. Okay, so remember this is a square root, so there's an imaginary two right there. So fractional exponents, no go. And then something like negative three over x squared, because again, that's going to have a negative two. Okay, plus two x plus five. Because this here is going to be x to the negative 2, and that can't be negative. All right? So now, what do the graphs of polynomial functions look like? Well, the graphs of polynomial functions, it's real simple to identify one. Okay? 
They're simply smooth curves. Okay, these are polynomials. Now, if you look at a graph and it has a break or a jump, like say this, this is not a polynomial because of this um, jump right here, or gap, whatever you want to call it, same thing. Also, polynomials don't have sharp corners, so this also is not a polynomial, okay? <clears throat> so, now, if you notice, you have, you know, this one goes down on the left and this one goes up on the right. This is called the entails, and we're about to go over entail behavior. Okay, we're about to go over entail behavior. So, with entail behavior, if you have an odd degree, okay, if you have an odd degree and your leading coefficient is positive, all right, odd degree, leading coefficient positive, it's going to go down to the left and up to the right. That's going to be your intel behavior. If your leading coefficient is negative, it's going to go up to the left and down to the right. We're, we're going to go over some examples of this so it'll make more sense if it's not right now. If you have an even degree, and you have a positive leading coefficient, it's going to go up to the left and up to the right. If you have a negative, it's going to go down to the left and down to the right. Remember odd, you remember odd opposite? They point in opposite directions. Even equal, they point in the same direction. Okay, so positive odd, down up. Positive negative, up down. Even positive, up up. Even negative, down down. Okay, and you, and you can remember, you can tell the degree because that's your highest exponent and then your leading coefficient is your number that is with that term with the highest exponent. All right, so let's look at this example. f of x equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x minus 8. Now, how are we going to graph this? Well, the first thing we have to do to graph it is we can determine which way, what the intel behavior does. So, it's even, I mean, sorry, it's an odd degree, even, le even leading coefficient. So we know the end tail, ET, is going to be down up, okay, because remember, when it's odd and positive, it's down up. Now, we can also find the zeros of the function. So to do that, we set this equal to zero. Now we have to do what's called factor by grouping. We can group these first two, and if you look, they can give up an x, an x squared, giving you x plus 2. And then here they can give up a negative 4, giving you x plus 2. Now if we look at those terms, they can both give up an x plus 2. And then over here we're left with x squared minus 4. And now we simply find our zeros, where this can be factored again into x minus 2, x plus 2. So our zeros are going to be x equals negative 2 and 2. Okay, so now we know our x-intercepts. Okay, negative 2 and 2. Now, also... Turning points. We haven't talked about this yet, so I'm going to go over it right now. Turning points. Since our degree is 3, okay, our turning points are simply n, which is your degree, minus 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So we know this graph turns twice. All right, we're not going to be finding those because that's a calculus um, topic, but we do know this graph turns twice, okay? So now, another thing we need to find is the y-intercept, okay? To find the y-intercept, you set all the x's to 0. So that's 0, 0, 0, negative 8. So the y-intercept is negative 8. Now, one more thing, too. What's called multiplicity? 
Okay. What's called multiplicity? If it's an even multiplicity, it just touches the x-axis at the x value. And this is when you find your zeros. So down here. If it's an even multiplicity, it touches it, so it turns. It'll turn on the x-axis. If it's odd, it'll go through it. Well, if you notice here, we have two x plus twos. So we can write this as x plus two squared times x minus two. And of course, this gives us the x equals negative two. That's found with a even exponent, so that means it turns at negative two. And since the exponent here is odd, that means that x equals positive two, it's gonna cross through the axis, okay? So now, now that we have all this, we know our entails are down up. We know our x-intercepts are negative two, two. We know from multiplicity, it's gonna turn here, but cross through here. And we know our y-intercept is negative eight. And we also know turning points. We have two turning points because our degree is three and your turning points is your degree minus one. So we have two turning points. So now we can do our best to graph this. Okay, negative two, positive two. Uh, Y-intercept is negative eight. I know this is a 10 grid, so negative eight is right there. We know it's gonna turn twice, but that's all we know. And we also know that it's gonna turn at negative two. So what we can go ahead and do is go ahead and we know it's gonna turn there and we know it's gonna go through here. Okay, so we can bring this one down. Come down here, do something, turn through there, and then come back up. All right, so that is a rough sketch of, well, I lost the equation. F of x equals x cubed plus two x squared minus four x minus eight. All right, so the first thing we do, let's go over this again, because I know this is kind of new. The first thing you do is you look at your degree and you look at your leading coefficient. Here the leading coefficient is positive one. Since it's positive and odd, we know it goes down up. Next thing you wanna do is find your intercepts. Okay, set it equal to zero, solve for x. If when you find an, a zero, if it's found from something with an even degree, so like here it's x plus two squared, so the x minus the negative two is found with an uh, even degree, it's gonna turn at negative two. And if your zero is found with an odd degree, it's gonna pass through it. So here it's gonna pass through positive two, just like we did here. This is negative two and this is two, negative eight. It turned at negative two and it went through two, okay? And that's called multiplicity. Now turning points, your turning points is your degree minus one, okay, n minus one. So we have three is our degree. So our turning points, we have two of them. And to find your y-intercept, you simply, you simply set x equal to zero. So you put a zero in here, that's zero, 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 negative eight. So our intercept is negative eight. So then we went over to our graph and we wrote down what we knew. We wrote down our x-intercepts. We know it turns here and goes through here. We know our y-intercept is negative eight and we know we have two turning points. Here we have two turning points, okay? We also know our intel behavior is down up. So we start down, come up, turn at two, don't cross through, come back down, make sure we cross through eight and then go back up through two, okay? And like I said, finding how low this actually goes, that's a calculus topic, so we're not gonna get into that. So I'm not gonna take off how low you actually make this go as long as you cross through negative eight. Okay, but if you want it to, to look slightly different, um, as long as you have this right, this right, the negative eight right, and the turning point, I mean the um, end behavior right, you'll be fine. All right, let's look at another one. Let's look at a different equation now. Let's look at, let me find one. f of x equals negative x to the fourth plus four x cubed minus four x squared. 
Okay. So, <clears throat> first thing we need to do, let's look at Intel behavior. All right, it's, uh, it's even, so we know they go the same way. It's negative, so we know they go down, down. Okay, so we know they're going down, down. Now let's find our zeros or our x-intercepts. So we set this equal to zero. So we're, ended up, we're going to have to factor this. Well, if you look, if we pull out a negative, we have x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 4x squared. Okay? Now, if you look, all of these terms can give up an x squared. So this is x squared minus 4x plus 4. This here will factor down into x minus 2 squared. And don't forget we have the negative x squared. So now, to find our zeros, we set this equal to 0, so we know x equals 0. We set this equal to 0, we know x equals 2. Since both of these are found with an even exponent, we know they're, they're both going to be turning points. Whether they, go, whether they turn up or down, we'll figure that out in a minute. Okay, but we know they're going to turn now. All right. Now, uh, y-intercept. Well, if we look, put a 0, 0, 0. Our y-intercept is 0. And turning points. Our degree is 4, so 4 minus 1 is 3, so we have 3 turning points. Okay, so let's plot our zeros. We have 1 at 0, 1 at 2, and our y-intercept is 0. Okay, and we got 3 turning points. So we know we're going to turn here. we got to turn downward here because we know <coughs> that the graph is going to start over here. So we're going to do that. So we have to turn down, come back up. We know we're going to have to turn down again here, and then end it up like that. So it's kind of, kind of, it'll kind of look like an upside down W. How low this goes, like I said, that's a calculus topic. We don't know. We'll, you'll figure that out when you take calculus. All right. Now, the very last thing I want to hit really quick All right, is called the inter intermediate value theorem. This is the last thing we're doing. It's called the intermediate Value theorem. Uh, I spelled that wrong. We'll just call it Theo. Okay. Intermediate value theorem. What that means is, okay, if we had a function, say f of x equals x cubed minus 2x minus 5, and I said show that this has a real zero. Remember, real zeros are the ones that pass through the x-axis has a real zero, so has a real zero between x equals 2 and x equals 3. All right, so how are we going to do this? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take 2 and evaluate this function, f of 2. So it's 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 minus 5. So that's 8 minus 4 minus 5, <clears throat> which will give us negative 1. So f of 2 equals negative 1. Now I'll do it as with f of 3. 3 cubed minus 2 times 3 minus 5. So that's what? 27 minus 6 minus 5, which is 16. So f of 3 equals 16. Since f of 2 is negative and f of 3 is positive, then the intermediate value theorem says there, this function has to cross the x-axis somewhere between 2 and 3. That's all the intermediate value theory says. Gives you two points, you evaluate the function, if they change signs, the intermediate value theorem says it has to cross somewhere between those two points. All right, that's it for the intermediate value theorem. Okay. So there has to be a real number somewhere that if you evaluated f at, you would get 0. Okay, That's it for the intermediate value theorem. Um, that's, that's it for this video as well. Um, you can watch this video as many times as you need to. Make sure you understand the concepts and see you tomorrow in class.